hey, what's up? It's been a little bit. Made a new thing. Wanted to show it off. Uh, I'm going to make this into a full track eventually, but right now I've just got this interesting bro step kind of drop. And I wanted to go through some of the sound design stuff I did. Just, you know, as a as a neat thing. So I'm going to play it for you here. Of course, the CPU issue is happening again. I'm just going to play it as audio. Give me a second. <clears throat> So yeah, that's that's this thing. So I wanted to walk through this like project file. Um, as you can see, it's actually quite complicated. Uh, this this top row here is just a drum loop. I'm just gonna play that for you. So the kick is this one, it's just an antidote audio thing. The snare is from some, I was in a Discord server with uh, Ravitex and a bunch of his fans, so that's one of his snares, he made like this, he was doing a thing, Tesla X was making a bunch of snares and I downloaded them. Haven't talked to those guys in like forever, but I'm just, I just slammed the compressor on them. Uh, both the kick and the snare and then I layered it with this like percussion-y sound. A little offset and I've got these hi-hats I've got closed and open the open one is just uh, the closed one sorry is just the 808 hi-hat it's just stock in a full studio and this one is a a real recorded hi-hat that I downloaded off of splice and then of course I have the snares uh, reverb tail reversed Yeah. So that's the beat. So I guess we should just start by... Uh, I'm going to go through my process here. The first, the, the first idea I had, basically, is when I started making this, my idea was basically... That was basically it. It was just like this ending, the chords, and uh, of course it's a super saw, so it's eating up the CPU. It's not fun to do that while I'm doing a recording, but it's, it's, I just basically had the idea to have this be like, I had the idea for the voice leading in my head. It's just four or five, and then a and then a, like a wub that would presumably resolve to one because it's on the, the root note of the key, which is D-sharp. For this, uh, yeah, so this sound, it's just super saw. There's a bass and a sub bass. And there's a lead sort of playing a sort of top melody, which is also just a super saw. So there's this bass here. This is like my main growl. I have a bit crusher having some modulation on it. And that gives it a more vowel feel. 
the main base, which I've creatively listed as main. It's just a generic, like, wubby, regular chop base, you know? Got rig modulation, bit crusher, OTT, you know. And then I have Vocodex turning on. And I've just got a bunch of stuff modulating basically, turning on. I don't know why all this stuff is open. If any uh, FL Studio power users, for lack of a better term, want to tell me if there's a way I can have it so the plugins aren't open all the time, that would make these recordings a lot better. <laughs> But yeah, that's this. I just have uh, pit, vocal pitch shifting, format shifting. And then I have a ring modulator, ring modulator turning on here. Um, this bass here is just, is just, you know, 16th notes. And I have, uh, what is this? I don't remember. I think that's also a ring modulator. Yeah, that's ring. That's just ring mod, and I have for just the settings. I'm doing the settings so that there's like a two different parts to it. It's one bass sound, but there's two different parts to it. So I'm just gonna turn all of this on. Why am I not hearing anything? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I have the track muted, obviously. Of course, it doesn't want to behave because uh, I'm doing a recording at the same time, but if I were to consolidate that, it would sound like it did in the intro. And I also have this wub sound here. This, it's this is just the most basic like wah wah sound there is. Let me let me open up the channel rack here. Yeah, I have slight. The main sound is literally a saw with a sub underneath. And I have FM from B running through this, this wavetable here, Ethos. Hyperdimension distortion. To get the wubby, like vowel sound, wah wah, that's just a low pass. Hyperdimension, I've, I have this, Turning on with the, I've got hyper and dimension expanders just like woofing with the, with the, the level, hard clip distortion, and I have compression with the threshold turned all the way to the left. Well, not all the way because that would be a bit much, but yeah. And then I bring back that bass, change the settings a bit more. Then I go into this section here where I just like build on these chords instead of having it be uh, 
instead of having it be a complete like rhythmic dubstep kind of thing, I do this thing where I just I do like melody. I need to stop doing that because like nothing is ever going to make it pleasant to listen to. I don't know why the recording takes up so much because it, like it works perfectly fine when I don't have OBS open. So it's like, I don't know. There's something with, up with OBS. And then I bring these, uh, the growls and the wub wubs in to articulate, basically. When it's uh, chords and, like, melody, I let the drums be a bit more interesting. There's a lot more triplets. with uh, Especially with the kick drum. Yeah, you see here. Usually, like, for the, like, dubstep parts, I have it be so it's just kick, snare, kick, snare. But when it's a, a chord, like a block chord, a super saw, I bring in, like, triplets, go da, 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 ksh. So this sound here is something I'm actually quite happy with. This is a dubstep bass that I created by creating an arpeggiator, basically. I was thinking the sound I wanted to switch to was more of a color bass thing because I wanted it to feel more melodic, more like harmonic and sort of tone. But then I decided, hey, why not fake it, right? Why not do it in a fake way? So I just got an LFO. This is a, a serum preset that I made. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah. It's just a square where I've got... So that's the basic sound. But putting it through, but I made an arpeggio to so make it feel more chordy. And it feels, I don't know, it's kind of like crystal. I don't know if that makes sense. It feels like it's like glass. Because you hear the arpeggio, you know, like how in 8-bit video games, they would like use arpeggios to simulate chords. That's kind of the idea I was going for here. And then I have an LFO doing the level to make it feel more like a dubstep bass. And I just have Dimension Expander on that, so... And then I have a ba another basic, you know, typical dubstep bass here. Let me see if I can open this one up. I used a basic mini and I sort of like did it between a square and a saw. I've got FM from B going. And I just have it, I just have some of the way. I've got this, uh, I've just got this uh, comb filter here tied to this other one to make it, to give it a little bit of variation.
so it makes it more interesting. I know you're hearing the reverb on my dubstep basses in one of my previous videos. I said I hate doing that. Um, so the way I have it set up is I have sends, sends over here. I've got sidechain. That's just, you know, regular compression with the kick and snare. And here I have, this is my send. I have it 100% wet on this plate reverb with, you know, typical settings. No pre-delay or anything. And I have a roll off of the low end so it doesn't make the basses muddy. It's just, it's just reverbing. And then I'm also side chaining the reverb tail. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to turn the reverb down a little bit and a bit more into the sidechain. But I'm sidechaining the reverb, actually, with the kick and the snare. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. I figured it would say, A, it would save on CPU for it to have all the reverb going into one send and then sidechain the reverb and cut out the reverb. But I also thought, you know, space, right? Space in the bass. My, most of the dubstep bassy sounds aren't actually in the bass frequency, so it can't really hurt to reverb those if you cut the bass signals out. So I have I have low cut in the reverb itself, and I'm I have a, a a low roll off as well, which I'm gonna actually do that too. But yeah. Okay, let's open up the playlist again. So the other things I have, this sound here, this is actually a drum loop. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that wild? I just... I just completely destroyed it. Completely destroyed that drum drum loop. So bit crusher, OTT, stereo widening, EQ and compression. I've just, you know, very subtle EQ and compression. You know, just a typical compression, you know with a high threshold to like squish it. And I'm sending that ever so slightly to the reverb, but my reverb is actually too much. So I'm gonna bring the reverb itself down. But yeah, I took this, uh, I sort of destroyed that drum sample and turned it into like an articulated, like glitchy, like start, like stab, start of the a, a next section drop and I use it in that way basically exclusively kind of like a drum fill but also it doesn't really sound like drums because I destroyed the sound but yeah for effects I've got this air loop I didn't use the crowd cheering I'm debating adding it It's, it's just subtle. I might add the crowd cheering, and I'm just cutting it out, in and out, wh whenever the chords are playing. When there's chords, I don't have this playing, because I don't need to fill up that space, and I don't want to overdo it, you know? Because the chords themselves, it's a super saw, it's heavily detuned, it fills up the entire range. So I don't actually... And of course, it's reverb sidechain. But I put it through both of the sends. And offbeat chords, you know, it, it's me. I do this. This is a music box from Labs. Labs is like my favorite plugin now. Labs and BBC Orchestra from Spitfire. It's it's legit my favorite plugin of like all time.
there's huge libraries of the plugin is free. There's huge libraries of sounds, and it's just like the most wonderful thing you can get. I'm using Hannah Peel's Music Box because it's a wonderful, wonderful sample, and I'm just using it for offbeat chords because it has a strong attack, but it doesn't die off too far. And I, with the, I particularly want the space filled with the dubstep drop, so that's uh, that's kind of my reason for using it. But I'm I'm still thinking I want. I'm debating adding in that crowd cheering sound that, you know, I use in basically every track. And I'm also thinking I'm going to add like a tonal ambient sound of just, you know, a, a D sharp, just drone, just going subtly in the background. But yeah, that's, that's this track so far. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, bing bong, wallow, sting stong. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. Bye. <laughs>